For as long as I can remember, my mum has been recommending me one fantasy author. One fantasy author that I haven't really seen spoken about online, I haven't heard too much about them, and I don't tend to see them in many bookshops. But that one fantasy author is an author I'm finally going to be reading from today. It's Catherine Kerr, who is the author of a huge 14 book world. There are multiple different acts within this huge overarching series. There's five different acts, splitting it up into lots of sub-series. The first one is the Devery series, which contains Daggerspell as book one, which is the book I'm gonna be reading today. Not to shame myself for using Wikipedia as my source, but there is so much in this. So act one, which as I said is called the Devery series, that contains Daggerspell, Darkspell, The Bristling Wood, and The Dragon Revenant. So those are the first ones that I'm gonna be jumping into. Daggerspell came out in 1986, and the most recent book in this world came out in 2020. So these are still being published. That was the first in act five. So there is a lot to dig into here, and I'm pretty excited. This is a book series that my mum has been recommending me for a very long time, and I honestly feel ashamed that I haven't read it yet because my mum's recommendations are always on point. So she's gonna be pretty pleased I'm reading it. We went to a bookshop this week in Siren Sester and it was a fantasy specific bookshop and they did have the Catherine Kerr books. And my mum got very excited because you don't often see them in bookshops. They have recently been reprinted. So they are a little bit more about now than they used to, but she wanted to film a little clip telling you guys why she thinks you should read this series and why it's brilliant. So I'm gonna show you this clip and then I'm gonna tell you what the series is about. Hello, viewers of Books Nest. This is the first from an epic series that you have to read. It's so good. Dagger Spell. They've also got Dawn Spell and Dragon Spell, but they are missing Dark Spell from that series. And then we come down here. Honestly, you can't go wrong. This is an epic series. I love it. I've read it three times, the whole lot. So if my mum hasn't already convinced you to pick up this book series, I'm gonna be trying to do just that in this vlog. I'm gonna be reading just book one, which is Dagger Spell for this video. This is gonna be spoiler free. I'm just gonna be giving you my thoughts and feelings as I read it. I'm on a Patreon live show all day today. So I'm kind of hoping that I can read this series all in one day. Well, not the whole series, <laughs> not all 14 books, just the one, the first book. I'm hoping I can read book one just today hopefully. All I know about this book series is it's following two lovers who are always destined to find each other throughout their future lives, and it's spanning over years and years and years of them finding each other in all these different lives and different situations and the fantasy world that's happening alongside that. This, I assume, is one of the OG covers for book one. We do actually have the original ones back at my family home. They look a little bit different to this, but there is, there's just so many of them. This is such a chunky fantasy series to be able to get stuck into. I'm going to read you the Goodreads blurb for book one. Even as a young girl, Jill was a favourite of the magical, mysterious wild folk who appeared to her from their invisible realm. Little did she know her extraordinary friends represented but a glimpse of a forgotten past and a fateful future. 400 years and many lifetimes ago, one selfish young lord caused the death of two innocent lovers. Then and there, he vowed never to rest until he righted that wrong, and laid the foundation for the lives of Jill and all those whom she would hold dear. Her father, the mercenary soldier Cullen, the exiled berserker Rodri Malwed, and the ancient and powerful Herbman Nevin, all bound in a struggle against darkness, and a quest to fulfil the destinies determined centuries ago. Here in this newly revised edition comes the incredible novel that began one of the best love fantasy series in recent years, a tale of bold adventure and timeless love, perilous battle and pure magic. From long-standing fans of Devery and those who have yet to discover this exciting series, Daggerspell is a rare, special treat. It sounds so good and I'm really excited. I feel like it's got a Hob level of epicness to it, which has me very excited because I know that people love Hobbes writing so much. I haven't read any Robin Hobb yet, but I really want to and I feel like I'm gonna really, really like that world. But this one similarly has that huge, big world with multiple series inside of it. So I'm really looking forward to diving into it. I think it's going to be great. If you do want to try this, by the way, it's currently free on Audible to listen to, and it's pretty cheap in the Kindle store. I think I got it for £3.50. It's also on Kindle Unlimited for the first book, so you can't go wrong, really. I'm going to be reading it on my Kindle. This is my first read on my new Kindle, which I'm very excited about. If you haven't yet watched the unboxing and decorating video for this, I will leave it linked above. I can't wait to jump in, so I'm going to give you thoughts as I go. Spoiler free, as I said, but I'm excited. This might well be the best and laziest thing I've ever done, and I have zero regrets. <laughs> my Kindle is currently on an arm coming off of my coffee table so that I can read on sprints hands-free. I have a little button that turns the page for me. 
so I don't even need to move at all and I can just stay under my blanket all cozy and reading all day and I am so happy about it. <laughs> It's taken me a rather long amount of time to read chapter one. It was a very long first chapter. However, reading on Kindle, I feel like it just reads quicker and it doesn't feel like it's too long. But we've so far been introduced to Jill, who I assume is one of our main characters and her dad, who have gone off to try and get work and shelter for themselves, especially like towards the winter as it's getting colder. And now that chapter's over, I feel like we've kind of been given a little bit of an insight into the, the lovers that are trying to find themselves, like and how, that storyline works. I'm very intrigued by that because I assume that they start off as children and then grow up to then find each other as adults and I don't know if they know that they have to find each other or if it's just like an instinct within them. I'm really intrigued. It feels like we've got two different storylines going on here that are going to start weaving together. This book does have a guide at the start of it to some of this world and pronunciations and stuff which is really useful but I don't want to keep referencing it back and forth because it kind of takes me out of the story so that is there which I think is good but I'm not using it as much as I probably could be. Okay on to the second part of the story, second storyline. I definitely preferred the first storyline with Jill. I found that more intriguing but this one has a little bit more politics brought into it and there's some kind of marriage clause things happening but here's a gripe of mine in general with fantasy books there is normally a lot of characters lots of names floating about the place if we could just stick to one name for each character that would be great but I feel like you either get their first name or their last name both of those together or a nickname and in this we're getting first names and then we're sometimes getting nicknames so I was just reading for like 20 minutes thinking that I was reading about two different sets of characters no no it was the same set just given nicknames <laughs> why Okay, we need to chat about this book because having read a little bit more and no, I did not finish it in one day. I don't know why I thought I could finish it in one day. This is the first of a huge fantasy series. You are getting introduced to a lot of setting, character, fantasy world, plot, establishing the law. I don't know why I thought I could intake all of that in one day and I just, it didn't happen. I didn't even reach 50% on Sunday. So we're just gonna keep reading it throughout the week. That's fine, I'm enjoying it a lot, but I, I feel like we need to have a chat because what I thought this book was about, it is what this book is about, but I feel like the blurb is slightly misleading as to the whole kind of plot of this. And it's useful being able to chat to my mum about it because she's read it so many times that I can kind of just verify if I am in taking it correctly and where I think it's kind of heading towards and like what, just generally being able to chat to her about it is good because I was kind of, going down one route with this and it's actually kind of going down a little bit of another route now so we're just gonna we're gonna talk about that so the blurb very much makes this sound like it's two lovers who are like ripped away from each other and they have to spend every life trying to find each other again and it is about that but the fact that they're lovers isn't the primary point of this basically it is two people it is a man and a woman the woman has this destiny that the man knows about and it's this great destiny she must fulfill she ends up veering off the path of this and going down an unfortunate route. There is a little tiny bit of incest in this, kind of Game of Thrones level incest. It's a very short part of the plot and it's done to show what a shit situation one of the characters is in, but just letting you know that that is in there. It's not something that is in the future books. I've checked with my mum and she can't remember there being anything else mentioned of that, but it's just, it's a very brief part at the start of this. But this, so this woman has kind of veered from her path, veered from this great destiny that she has that she needs to fulfill. Her lover knows that she has this destiny and he can see that she's veered from this path and gone down this route that has taken her away from that and he feels like he's failed her in not being able to keep her on that path. She ends up dying, that's in the blurb so there's no spoilers, she dies and he vows to the gods that he will not die until he can help her complete her destiny. So that is why he keeps finding her in other lives, not necessarily because of the lovers thing, but because of the destiny thing. I feel like that clears some stuff up for me because I was kind of concerned like what if she comes back as a child? Like obviously she is going to come back as a child because she's going to be reborn as a baby, but what if he like finds her again as a child? Like where are we 
where are we going with that? But it makes sense now that it isn't because she is his lover. They were lovers to start with and then stuff happened that you'll have to read it to find out. Stuff happened and now he is kind of just vowing to help her complete her destiny in her future lives and must find her in those lives to help her do just that. There's lots of different time periods going on, we're seeing lots of different timelines and I assume will continue to throughout the series. Lots of different characters, a little bit overwhelming, loads of the characters' names are still beginning with G, we've still got a load of new characters being introduced with names beginning with G, which is really helpful. <laughs> there's just, there's a lot to take in and I feel like at the moment I'm a little bit overwhelmed with information, but I am getting there with it and I can see how clever and the depth that this is gonna go into. I'm enjoying the fantasy system with this, these wild folk that's in one of the timelines. We're being introduced to the wild folk who not everybody can see and I'm kind of wanting to learn a bit, little bit more about them because one of them is a gnome, which is fun to read about. Whilst the main plot isn't like romance centric as, as I thought it was, there is still apparently quite a lot of different romances in this and it just spans this huge epic universe. So I'm excited, I'm enjoying it, but I just wanted to kind of fill you in because I feel like it definitely went down a different route to the one I initially thought it was going down, but I'm quite happy about it because this Destiny thing I think adds a bit more clout to it than them just trying to find each other because they were lovers. And I think the fact that we've got that history of them, I assume we'll maybe see flickers of that coming in as well, but I really wanna know what her destiny is now. So I'm intrigued by that. The plot of having them trying to find each other, but also like we get to see other characters reoccurring from other timelines as well. So we get to see their souls in new characters. And I just think that's really interesting because it really creates a lot of lore and a lot of backstory to each person. I don't know how I'm gonna retain all this. I feel like at times I need to start making notes, but I'm excited and I'm gonna let you know my thoughts as I keep reading. I went outside for like a few hours today in completely normal weather and my hair is not obeying me anymore, nor that it ever does. But anyway, hi, it's now Saturday, which is a week, nearly a week actually. It'll be a week tomorrow after I told you I was gonna read Dagger Spell in one day, and I have still not finished it. <laughs> but I'm gonna sit down and read it in a little bit. I am really liking this. We are still very much being introduced to the whole wider element of things. I'm very intrigued to know what the destiny of our main character is because we know that she's got this destiny and that the other character knows what the destiny is and is trying to like help her get to it. But we haven't really seen much of the connection between them and it, other than their like initial connection that they had in their first lives together. I really, really want that to be explored. And I know that obviously it will because it's a huge series, but I really want to know more about how this works and how like their multiple lives works. I will also say if you are a fan of God of War or Skyrim, I feel like this kind of has the atmospheric vibes of both of those games. Like when I'm imagining it, I'm kind of imagining it like those cutscenes in a way, in places. Not that the story is necessarily similar to the story of those games, but just that's the vibe I'm seeing in my head when I imagine the cutscenes. It's, it's good, I'm enjoying it, it's atmospheric. I'm just reading it slower because I'm taking in a lot. So I'm gonna read a little bit now. I'm not putting a timer on it, it's fine. If I finish it tomorrow, that's great. If I don't, then that's good too because I am enjoying it and I'm feeling immersed in the world and with the characters, still really liking Jill, enjoying the wild folk, we're getting a little bit more from them as well. Just the magic system is very intriguing to me and that intrigue is definitely pulling me forward and I can see would pull me into future books in the series as well. Okay, I finished Dagger Spell by Catherine Kerr. I gave it four out of five stars. I feel like for me, I was unsure about this rating because I can see that this is gonna be a really big epic series and that this first book is building towards that and giving you a lot of information about the lore and getting you to where you need to be to keep going with the series. But I think that therefore felt overwhelming to me. But I don't think I can critique the book for that because that is what you get with a first book in a big epic fantasy series. At times I was getting a little bit lost with who everybody was, but I think that by the end of it I had a good grasp and the end of the book has really opened up the path and the journey that these characters are gonna go on. And also this kind of fated idea of destiny and how that's affecting what is happening with them. And it's interesting because you as the reader are following one of the characters who knows 
who all these people are and who they've been in their past lives and you're getting to see that knowledge from them at the same time as following these characters who have no idea that they even had a past life. I think there's a lot to unpack about this magic system and I'm very interested to know how it develops. There is this acknowledgement that there is magic and fantasy in this world but it's not really openly discussed particularly by other characters that don't have these magical abilities so I think that some people are aware that there are these multiple lives that people are living but I don't think the actual day-to-day -day people in this book are aware of that. There was definitely some Welsh influences here with the language and some of the things spoken about that is talked about at the front of the book I think I mentioned already that there was like this preface to the book that was going through how to pronounce things and the origin of those things as well so that was interesting to see throughout this as well generally I think this is going to be a really good series I think that if I continue it I might do it as an audiobook because I ended up immersion reading or attempting to immersion read this which is where you listen to the audiobook and read it at the same time and that I was trying so hard to do that properly and then ended up kind of letting the audiobook take over because I was I, I struggle with immersion reading it doesn't really hook me as much as I hoped it would but I was thinking that it would maybe help me process it a little bit more but actually the audiobook did help me with that and also help me with the pronunciations and things with the way the narrator was pronouncing things so I might recommend the audiobook for this and it is free on audible as well which is really great generally I had a good time. I'm glad I finally read this because my mum has honestly been asking me to read this for the longest time so we can now discuss it and I will I think continue on reading this series. Is this going to be the next big fantasy series? I mean to be honest it's got a lot of potential. It has lots of little series within one big series of this one big world. It's got the element of this fated destiny thing going on. We did get more of that introduced and seeing the characters kind of come into their own a bit more, but we've got this fated destiny. There's a little bit of a romance element going on. In fact, quite a few different bits of romance things going on. There was some quite big epic battle moments. There was high stakes, there was drama, there is the fantasy element. Lots of different characters to get to know, lots of different laws and worlds to understand or like lands to understand. I mean, obviously this isn't a new fantasy series by any means, but I feel like it's one that I just haven't really seen being talked about much and I think that it could have the potential to be something that people enjoy in the same way that they maybe enjoy Brandon Sanderson or Robin Hobb and I had a good time with it. Thank you so much for coming along on this reading experience with me. It's always a bit tricky filming these spoiler free but I feel like not many people have probably read this that are watching this video so I did want to keep it spoiler free but thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.